Hey guys, this will be video 35 for the how to design build uh, 1950 uh solid body archtop jazz guitar that sure is looking a lot like a Les Paul, uh, if not almost identical. So um, call it what you want, but uh, it sure looks like one to me. But nonetheless, uh, it is a 50s jazz guitar, and I'm going to talk about two high points in this video, and they will be uh, how to proceed with installing the headstock overlay and how to, uh, my reasoning for uh, how I would recommend going, going about installing uh, the pickups and uh, the, um, the, you know, little pick guard. I never put a pick guard on a guitar, so uh, this is uncharted territory for me, other than, you know, it is what it is. So it should be, if I can do this, I should be able to, should be able to at least talk to, explain to you how you would put that on. Uh, where I'm going with this, uh, they actually are fit. They're fit to the, the pickup. All right, let me reel myself back in. Um, what I want to talk about, before I proceed into talking about that stuff, I want to... Uh, pick up where I got cut off in the last video. I was just talking about making certain that you keep your uh, drill path very much perpendicular to your work surface because it's it's one thing if you've just had like one screw that fastened this on or even like on the old Bixby's, uh, I think that, yeah, they only have three. Yeah, I'm looking at my old uh, 59 to 60 from my 6120, they only have three and you can start out with that one on the bottom and then, and then you can kind of just, you know, put it wherever it needs to go. But when you're working with the B7, uh, it's pretty unforgiving. And you got uh, four locations down here, two locations down here. Uh, they got to all, once, once they torque up, they got to marry up and not be in any sort of bind or, con you know, or, 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 you know, or just a conflict. You don't want to have any, any conflict. Okay, and one thing I did, get, uh, I had to clip the video fairly early because it cut off, but I had gone over the fact of how, you know, if you did have an old guitar and you're mounting the Bigsby off, then it's no big deal with a PAF type uh, pickup because you're able to just move that surround a little bit. But with the P90s, totally different story. Uh, so just, as I always say, proceed with caution and just don't try to figure everything out based on a set of instructions out of a box. Just look at what's in front of you. And the most important thing is going to be your uh, a, a center line of your neck and how it affects the offset, whether to the left or the right and all that jazz. So anyway, and it uh, I hate that it did get clipped because this guitar looks really, really sexy with the B7 on it and the uh, PAFs. So just let your imagination run with you there. Uh, and you can also see how strong the, it also really defines all the carve work, you know. Anyway, I need to stop talking about this because I don't want, uh, I don't want to try to change anybody's mind. All right. Because I love this. This is really cool. Uh, and, and again, the cool thing about this guitar, uh, uh, I typically get really emotionally attached to my projects when I'm working on them because I'm always building something primarily for myself. But when I did Rick's uh, guitar, it was really cool. I was able to stay uh, emotionally detached. And if Rick said that he wanted a certain thing, uh, man, I didn't balk. I didn't, I didn't, uh, I didn't say, well, you know, why don't we do this or you ought to consider this. It was really cool to just, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, fulfill the contract and build exactly what they wanted. And that's one of the reasons, one of the, I'm going to digress briefly. That was one of the reasons why I so wanted to do this project because I had never done, uh, I had never done a, a mahogany capped, uh, guitar. And I had certainly never done the staple and the P90 configuration not in a professional setting. So let me reel myself back in. And I said, so I'll say that, say this, I was really excited to uh, uh, tackle this thing and even order the templates from Stuart McDonald because I had never worked with those templates. And I was curious because uh, some of the online reviews were, were really, uh, you know, they got rave reviews and there was a couple of people that were, were your typical cranky, cranky guys. But uh, I didn't see, I didn't see any, any issues because those two locations right there, 
from the very beginning. That's what this whole guitar has been built by. And they were spot on. So I say that to say this, uh, definitely was a very good investment. All right. So what do I want to talk about? I talked about that whole, let me check the time, make sure we're rolling or five minutes, give or take. Uh, I want to cover most importantly, the, uh, how you would proceed with the overlay install. Cause I had mentioned, oh yeah, this video is pretty much coming to a close and I got, you know, just, I'll do some general conversation. Um, this is probably the most critical part of the whole job. And uh, I'm going to reel my ego completely in, but I have to admit there's a part of me, I'm very fearful that whomever glues this on or however they approach it, uh, I, I really hope that they'll heed my warnings because you, you can really get in trouble and it can really end up looking uh, rough. And I, I'm not talking about this client here, but I'm just talking about in general, because I know there's an online supplier that provides these that uh, they're the, they're the one eighth inch carbon fiber and they have the, um, you know, all the original binding and uh, they're sharp. They look really, really impressive. And that's what we use to restore Rick's Les Paul as well. And uh, nonetheless, I say that to say this, when you're looking at a two dimensional, uh, item that has thickness to it, which it's one eighth of an inch thick. Okay. Okay. It is this thickness right here. And you're talking about, you know, tilting it on a 17 degree angle. So that means this is going to get cut on a pitch. And then also if you did a jazz profile like we've done here, well then you're, 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 you're not going to have a 90 degree corner right there that corner is going to have to be shaped a little bit to blend in with the lower and look like it actually you know came that way you don't want to see a contract you don't want to see a 90 degree turn here and then a 17 degree turn here or 14 degree so i say that to say this there's several several things if, if i had this piece in my hand the way i had with rick's Man, I was doing an enormous amount of offset consideration and and maybe a, a you know a little bit of encouragement, but I don't have this in hand, and the uh, someone else is going to be doing this install, so I'm just going to have to uh, uh, share with you what I experienced when I was doing rigs, and the most critical thing that you could consider is 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 this these two points here. Okay. And I really, I think it would be a huge mistake for me to go ahead and install this, uh, nut here because you may realize that, uh, your, your overlay is, is much larger. When I say much larger, your overlay might be a 16th of an inch longer than the one that I put on Rick's. And that, that changes everything. That will, that will just give you so much more uh, opportunity to possibly let your overlay hang a little bit long and then fill that in with epoxy, paint it black. And then, in other words, you're letting you, at this point, this, this, un, this, uh, the, the lower should be subject unto your overlay. Don't start, um, filing and sanding and shaping your overlay in order to fit this. Now, based on this tracing that you gave me, that we, we've already uh, ascertained the fact that it's it's just about, you're probably going to be shocked at how little you have to do, uh, if anything at all. But nonetheless, I just want you to have the ability to, to move that overlay out a little, if you so choose, at a minimum, I built this headstock about a 32nd of an inch shorter than what you gave me. That will guarantee that once you cut this pitch right here, you don't run the risk of, of being too short. Because if you end up being a, just a 32nd of an inch too short right there, uh, where's the, uh, oh, wow, must have made a fall. Oh, it's in the floor. when you got this whole thing right here coming up you know in that corner which is what defines a custom uh 
once that's on a once that's on that pitched cut right there if it doesn't make it all the way to that nut it's going to be a huge eyesore and i'm going to stop talking because i'm going to sound like a know-it-all but all i'm saying is i built this headstock about a 30 second of an inch shorter just to guarantee that in the event yours is off a little bit you, you're not going to have a problem airing it up this is a fairly thin nut one option would be if you wanted to go with a go with a custom bone nut that is i'm not saying you're going to have to do this because you're you're not you should be able to glue yours right on and and be ready to rock and roll but you might consider going with with a little bit wider nut if you so choose if you so elect to move this out i'm exaggerating i'm talking like if you want to move it out a 30 second of an inch and then fill it in out here then you know you might want to change the nut all i'm saying without having this in hand this has been a terrifying proposition because i could have missed this by a 16th of an inch and you're on the phone with me going how in the hell am i supposed to you know stretch what what am i must keep losing that thing how am i going to stretch that right there <laughs> okay and that's what I'm saying. You can't. You just you, it, it's not it's not something that can be done. Okay. So I say that to say this. I've got it designed. As I just already said, you should be fine with this nut based on your tracing, which was very much likely based on that nut right there. Uh, I'm not creating any what ifs or any any hypothetical uh, uh, stressful situations. I'm just saying. Um, this lower should be subject unto your overlay, okay? And uh, how would I glue it down? I love epoxy, not just because I think it would be stronger, it would sound better, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, you, you, type bond would be fine on this, but the only thing I hate about type bond, it's it's like it's it's like a slip and slide. That stuff is just slipping all over the place, and then it it also it. Once it does tack, it tacks so fast that in the event you needed to move it or change something or you realize you got into a little bit of, of a of trouble, well now when you now you're gonna you're gonna have to just pull it off, clean it off with soap and or, or like warm water and let it dry and start over. But with the tight bond, I can put the tight the I'm, excuse me, with the uh, epoxy, I can take this tracing. And I can do the uh, epoxy lines on here, mix it on here, and, and gauge the, the surface area. Put the epoxy on this surface, put the epoxy on the overlay, and then you've already witnessed, you got 40, you got 30, 45, well, you got 20 to 25 minutes of work time. And if you got in a little bit of trouble, well, pull the clamps off, relax. If you had to pull the cover off, you know, this stuff ain't going to start sitting for about 30 to 40 minutes. Anyway, it gives you so much more time to work with and, and to make sure that you're not sitting here freaking out with tight bond trying to get the clamps up here. And you've got some sort of call that you designed that you think everything's great. You clamp it only to realize this, you know, what slipped a 32nd of an inch. If that happens. You're going to be going with a bone nut that is custom made you know, custom fit because, you know, you just will. Okay. So I just want you to really uh, play. Uh, and I'm going to send this with the guitar because this is going to be your target. You should, you, you, you will want your profile um, to be shaped uh, or you can use this to practice a little bit. Okay. And I'm going to stop talking. <laughs> because uh, I don't want you, uh, I don't want you, when I say you're uh, the client or whomever's building their own guitar, uh, if you're, if you made it this far, this is going to be a walk in the park. Okay. Obviously if you, if you did all that back there, but if have, if you've never done any of this type of stuff, uh, it's amazing how you'll think about everything that needs to be thought of, except for that one critical little thing. And then you'll be in trouble. So, and that's why I, I like the idea of not having that nut on there, and having the ability to uh, maybe epoxy this down and make certain that this is up here, uh, not even not even cut on an angle. In other words, and the, how would that how would that seventeen degree pitch get cut right there? Uh, it would get cut 
with, with a file. Let me just show you. Oh, you probably have a file right here. Once the, let, let's say this was tight like that right there, and, and the, the nut, the bone, the nut would not even go in there. Well, then you just come in here and you just you just really take your time. I don't care if it takes you half a day. Just slowly file that away because you got one shot at that to get to the point to where, let me get this off, to where that you're right at there at the end where, um, where you want that bone nut or that you want this nut to just barely be sliding down in there. Okay. And then that's what it should look like once it's all said and done. And then uh, the cool thing about it uh, is, you know, once this all starts, you, you see how quickly it just takes shape. Okay. All right. Let me check the time. 15 minutes and 55 seconds. Uh, what did I forget? There's so much going on right there. Uh, I really hope you'll epoxy it, and I would use uh, a slow dry, slow cure. Don't don't use a quick set epoxy, please. That's even five, 10, 15 minutes. That doesn't. That's not enough time. And uh, dry fit it. You know, once you shape this, go through the whole mock up stage of. You know, uh, you're, you're, if you are going to use some sort of call, put your call up there and clamp it. Maybe take some, make some pencil marks so that if your call hides everything, it, it, at a minimum, you can look up under the side and verify that your pencil marks, like your locator marks, it's kind of like timing an engine. You know, you, at least you can look look over here and reference and go realize, okay, I'm, I'm in time here, I'm in time there, I'm in time there. So if I'm in time there, that means that that, that means that this cover is a 64th of an inch far enough that way. So I know that when I shape and, and fit this nut, uh, it, I'll only have to shape for uh, 15 minutes and this baby will be dropping right in. Okay. It's, it's really enjoyable it once you figure it out, but... I've, boy, did I really show my inability to build a jazz guitar <laughs> about 17, 18 years ago when I first started doing overlay. Again, Benedetto made all the stuff look so, so easy, and it's not. Okay. Um, no need to talk about that anymore because uh, we'll end up having bad dreams. Uh, let's talk about how to finish the guitar. And we're so close. I mean, this is finished. My, my job's finished. Um, okay. Uh, he, here's, I'm just going to go straight to the finish line. Uh, I don't know who the manufacturer is of this pit guard. Uh, it sure looks like the real thing. Uh, if it's not, it's so darn close. It's, it's not fun. It's, it's funny. But one thing that is a little bit off is, uh, the radius, the radius, outside radius of the the pickup is ever so slightly different and it does not allow it to go all the way up against that okay it will require just a little bit of shaping in order to finish that and i'm going to just say this from a contractual standpoint that was not part of my agreement you know to build the job and i'm not saying that that you know i mean you know what i know that even this client here knows that because uh he, I was the one that said, hey, why don't you just send me these pickups so that I can assure that I get these depths right because I've never seen one of these. And uh, it's not that I was saying, oh, yeah, send me all your parts and I'll completely build your guitar. But And then I had even made a statement once, yeah, maybe it would be best if I just go ahead and install that because it's going to be really difficult, blah, 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 blah. And then the more I thought about it, it's, it's not that I was trying to get out of the job. I just realized I've never ever installed a set of pickups in a guitar before the strings were on it. You do that, you're asking for a, a, just an enormous amount of trouble because you might want to ever so slightly sand this side and move that pickup just a 32nd of an inch. And if I've already got these holes drilled, then you're having to plug them and you're having to glue them and you're having to wait for it to dry and then re-drill them. And then if I put them on a little bit too much of a pitch, uh, it might not, it, I might love the way it looks, but then you, the client might look at it and go, oh no, that's not what I wanted. So I say that to say this, that needs to be done later on. 
Now, if if you were my next door neighbor, I'd say do all your work and then bring it over one weekend. We'll, we'll uh, have a beer. We'll, we'll sit around the table and we'll and you tell me what you like. You know, do you like that? Do you like this? Do you like it flat? And then I would put them in. But I say that to say this. It probably won't take you more than two hours to do that install anyway. And I know that you were already planning on doing that work. So I would just feel so much better if I didn't try to be Superman and install these because I might miss it. And so, and then plus this still needs to be fit, not back here, but it needs to be fit to that one up there. And, uh, it's, uh, it's that if anything, you, you might want to do it differently. How would I do this? I would probably put some sandpaper on a straight edge and I would probably come in here and I would, I would sand that back and forth and I would probably even pitch it a little bit and I would probably even 